Hello, denizens of the internet. Now that One Piece is a massive success on Netflix, and I thankfully made the right call early, so I can sound very knowledgeable, otherwise the alternative would be to shut down my Twitter account, I also predicted Cowboy Bebop's failure. I am a genius. All kidding aside, if you are frequent viewers of this channel, you will know that in entertainment, no one knows anything. Which is a William Goldman quote, a brilliant screenwriter who wrote The Princess Bride, Marathon Man, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Misery, All the President's Men, to name a few. What a loser. There will be many One Piece Bebop comparison videos, I'm sure, but they will all be wrong because they will point to the entrails of the two shows without any understanding what a crapshoot success represents. A show has multiple potential failure points. So while I will get into some execution differences, success is not about quality, only numbers. A brilliant show with low ratings is worse than a crappy show with huge ratings. Yes, that is a very cynical thing to say, but that is how I kept my job. Bebop was a ratings failure, but at first blush would seem to be the easier property to convert from anime to live action. OP is a crazy fantasy, colorful, more childlike anime with exaggerated Tech Avery style animation. I should mention here that both shows were produced by the same company. The ingredients of any entertainment include the script, casting, the DOP, competent direction, TV does not require an auteur, and a great line producer. You never hear about the line producer. As far as I'm concerned, that is the first person you hire. Good ones will make you look like a genius. Having seen both shows, ironically, I think Bebop was the greater challenge for several reasons. One, while it was more realistic, it took place in the future, and the budget required to duplicate its 3D battles in outer space and the crazier on-planet encounters was beyond what Bebop could pull off. It looked really cheap. Two, the original series only had 26 episodes. While it had fantastic world building, it doesn't have the almost endless source material that OP has. And Bebop has a very clear story arc. That's bad for TV and returning viewers. Oh, but you say Game of Thrones had a big story arc, yes, but it provided plateaus where we could settle into mini stories for each faction. Bebop had only two factions, Spike and the gang, and, and Vicious's group, which was handled terribly. Uh, mostly, it was about the complicated and mysterious story of Spike. TV is a routine. I'm not entirely certain that the director of the original, Shinichiro Watanabe, would have agreed with me, but I would have pitched him on expanding the bounty, a hunt of the weak idea, while layering in the existential elements of the anime. Each week, the crew would get their bounty target. Sometimes they would succeed, other times they wouldn't, always trying to nail the next big win. Now, that's not too far from what was in the anime, but I would have made it more procedural. And I, I would have pushed out the big fight between Spike and Vicious to a series finale, because if I'm a network exec, I want this show to last five years minimum, and there ain't five years worth of plot in the original series. TV is less about the story than about bringing characters you love into your living space. Nailing both, of course, is the ideal. In many ways, Firefly was the better live-action adaptation of Bebop. In the case of OP, while the production design is probably more challenging, it's also easier because the sets, while whimsical, are believable, and the tech amounts to swords, cannons, and guns. There are no laser blasters, computers, memory chips, spaceships, or futuristic cars to worry about. OP is sails on wooden masts. 
That isn't to say OP did not have its 3D animation challenges, <laughs> Buggy the Clown, anyone, which was brilliantly done. In Bebop, they used 70s muscle cars cruising a dusty planet instead of the futuristic cars in the anime. I guess the intent was to make the locale look like Havana, Cuba. It didn't work. The film noir space adventure dialogue was embarrassingly strained, even when pulled straight from the anime. Perhaps even perfect casting would not have saved Bebop. Future tech can look incredibly cheesy. Just look at Amazon's The Peripheral, a wretched virtual reality adventure. A really good virtual adventure is Sword Art Online, especially the second series. Hollywood has a hard time with the realistic portrayal of computers. Don't, don't get me started. The Expanse was pretty good. Pirates, on the other hand, are very low tech. Now that I've kicked Bebop to the ground, let's kick it some more. When you look at the casting of OP, it is extraordinarily good. Inyaki Godoy is the glue that holds this all together. And while I love John Cho, he did not cut it as Spike, who was tall and lithe. Perhaps they were looking for Cho for his recognition factor. I understand he was also hurt during the filming and could not execute the fight scenes as well as he wanted. Unfortunately, Bebop has fantastic fight set pieces and the live version failed miserably in that regard. A taller, younger, hunkier actor with serious martial arts skills would have been my first choice. Was that pitched and turned down by Netflix, who probably wanted a name actor? Of course, that would not have been out of the question. Studio execs stick their noses into projects all the time. It's Hollywood's favorite sport. The unknown Godoy was the perfect pick for Luffy. Perhaps that was a lesson both the production company and Netflix learned. Daniela Pineda who famously published the legendary video shitting on the fans of Bebop for her not having the same sized boobs as Faye in the anime didn't help. The costume designer didn't either, opining how unrealistic Faye's costume was for the live show and instead denuded Panetta of any sexiness by dressing her in depressing dark leathers. That was not Daniela's fault. Now let's contrast Faye with Nami, who also has considerable ampleness in the finest anime tradition. Emily Rudd, like Panetta, is also deficient, but captures the sexiness of Nami. Bebop went for the tiresome girl boss. Panetta was nothing like Faye. These were two casting examples where I think everyone learned a lesson. Still, I need to remind everyone the fact that we mostly agree that OP got the casting right, that's all just a best guess until the damn thing is presented to you folks out there. A production company only has the skills to go through the casting process, which can take years. It cannot predict the future, nor control when actors are available. In both Bebop and OP cases, the production team thought that they did the very best. Unfortunately, Bebop was also saddled with the modern audience malaise. Was that also forced on it by the social justice warriors at Netflix? Who knows? You folks out there have no idea how many miracles production companies and networks pray for. It's why I'm sympathetic when I can see a good effort and angry when I see cynical laziness or checkbox diversity. As I mentioned in my OP reviews, it had the advantage over Bebop because the cartoony anime was impossible to translate to live action, and so they opted for more grounded and gritty. The end result produced several real emotional moments. Bebop it needed to be Rockford Files in space. Feel free to disagree. I am an old school network TV guy. Strangely, OP was accused of having too much fan service while Bebop inconsistent and confused fan service. Mainstream review outlets use fan service as an insult. 
But as these two projects reveal, the ratings evidence clearly points to the fact that there is no shame in fulfilling the key expectations of the fans. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.